you can see you can see where potential pivots are, right? Look at Tesla, right? Look at the, look at the channel on Tesla. Look at Zoom, right? Look at Zoom. Zoom is look at this. Zoom is looks like it wants to challenge the 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 March eight lows, right? Look at Zoom. Look at Roku. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody had a good day of trading. Um, you know, market is definitely different, right? This is not the the rabid bull market that, you know, if you started in the last, you know, four, four and a half years that you're used to. Um, you know, we've been talking about it for the last several days. You know, we're under supply, right? Every single index is under supply. Um, the, the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, have been rejected at the 50-day moving average um, incredible amount of time. It's just like, like, a, like a brick wall uh, they can't get through. And then we started talking about levels. We started talking about the, the, the leaders of the market uh, yesterday. We talked about the IWM reversing. This was one of the ones that led the market higher. We talked about the Dow uh, reversing and putting in many, many days of under the five-day moving average. And you know, it, it's one of those things that if you've been trading for a very, very long time, this isn't something new, okay? This is just something that most people have not seen before, especially if you started in the first three, four years. And there is a market, there is a scenario uh, that the market doesn't have to go up and we're living in it right now. And if you look at the cues, uh, and this is primarily my exposure um, pretty much every single day, you kind of see what happened. Well, you kind of see what's been happening and now we're kind of, we're not even talking about the 50 day moving average anymore. Now we're talking about this level here uh, around this 308, 309 level that does become uh, macro. And if you look at today's events, uh, if you watched last night's video, uh, we talked about the ability that, you know, we have to start looking at the downside of the market. You know, if we can't rally, and I came in today uh, pretty, you know, pretty delta neutral. You know, I, I thought there was a shot that maybe some names could have extended a rally, like a Netflix, maybe. Uh, maybe if, a, if a Amazon woke up considering it tested its 50-day moving average yesterday. But I also saw very, very quickly, and we'll, we'll show you the pivots in a second, how quickly things changed from the open. The gap got sold very, very quickly. Uh, the levels that we were talking about yesterday, they broke very, very fast. And we started to talk about from last night's broadcast, uh, 321 to the upside, 315 to the downside. And quickly, you can see how things really, really exaggerated. Uh, IWM, we talked about uh, yesterday also. As soon as it starts taking out, starts confirming the previous day's low of 216, this could get hit. Again, it was a very, very uh, aggressive pivot today on, on the feed as well. But more important, what, what everybody needs to understand when you get a market, and again, this is kind of an updated view, right? This is now the Dow underneath the five-day moving average for five days in a row, right? And they got rejected off the 10. Uh, the Qs, you know, now it's building a kind of a rolling top effect uh, to challenge this 309 level, right? You, you see really bearish uh, formations playing out. But the, the most important part, and this is what I, I really want to, um, you know, really want to hammer the point home. We haven't even seen technical damage yet, right? Technical damage is talked about on the bottom of this channel here that we saw a couple of weeks ago, right? On the spies, uh, cues, remember that 297 level? So nobody's even talking about a bearish scenario yet. The, the, these are just levels that every single day, whether you're a bull, a bear, uh, a portfolio approach, a day trader, a scalper, what, whatever your drug of choice is, you just need to know these levels, okay? And, and I believe there's no such thing as being a bull. There's no such thing as being a bear. It's just being an opportunist because the market doesn't go straight down. Your, your, your levels of success is not gonna be linear. There's plenty of up and down, up and down movements, just like an EKG machine. And you, know, you have to take advantage or at least be prepared for something that you're not used to. So if you've started in this market anywhere in the last you know, four years, four and a half years, you've seen nothing but aggressive buying. And every single dip got bought because every single dip, majority of the stocks were above supply. Now, if you look, the majority of the stocks are below supply. And this is when it starts getting, you know, very, very, very aggressive for a lot of novice traders, a lot of, um, a lot of novice investors that they believe they can you know, hold off the storm. And maybe they will, maybe they won't. We don't know, right? I, I don't know. I have a game plan tomorrow. 
like we'll talk about this in a second. Like I'm a hundred percent sell bias for tomorrow, right? That's my plan. I mean, every single stock uh, that's on my research looks like it's literally one day away from confirming really, really aggressive levels. Would it shock me to, to you know to have a dead cat bounce tomorrow? Of course not, right? I'm not oblivious to that. I get it, right? Your game plan is your game plan. Your opinion is your opinion. Until that game plan is confirmed, it's an opinion. Well, what's what's my worst case scenario? We don't confirm. Uh, the previous channels tomorrow and we start moving higher, okay, I can buy stock, right? So it's very, very important to kind of have an opinion, uh, understand your risk, right? You really have to understand your list, risk, but the most important part is appreciate levels. Like this level right here, uh, this 309 level tomorrow on the queues is kind of, is going to be a big deal, right? Uh, if we lose this 309 level on the queues on a close, then yeah, this is what's coming up in our future, this 297 level. So if you are an investor and you have a portfolio approach or you're sitting in positions uh, that, you know, slowly, unfortunately, they're bleeding against you, just, it, it, just you have to make a proactive adult decision of what happens next. You can't just sit there and say, well, the market has been good. Uh, in the last three, four years or so, I'm assuming it's going to be good again. Maybe it will, maybe we don't. Again, I don't know. I'm an idiot, right? We're all idiots. We don't know, okay? We can only trade uh, off of the data that the market is showing us. And if you are, you know, believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, then you believe in the theory that, well, 90, 95% of the stocks are all underneath, you know, underneath supply right now. Well, how can you actually turn around and start looking for longs for tomorrow's session? Maybe you'll get some dead cat bounces, right? If we, we kind of hold today's lows tomorrow, maybe getting some dead cat bounces for some cash flow using today's lows as your stop. But can you honestly turn around and say, I'm looking for quote unquote breakouts tomorrow? There's, there are no breakouts. That's the whole point of stocks underneath supply. And we, you know, we've been speaking about this for the last couple of days. There's no such thing as a breakout when your stock is faced with Demand, excuse me, supply zone after supply zone after supply zone. There's a reason why the NASDAQ 100 kept on getting rejected at the same levels. These are very, very important reflection points that if a seller takes control over, things are going to go lower. If the buyers clean up the sellers, they're going to go higher. And obviously, you can just see it with your eyes, right? You can just see it with your naked eyes where potentially the next move can come. And when you do your homework tonight, and I personally you know, don't think you have to be very creative tonight, right? Uh, you know, I, I, I trade basically primarily, what, 10, 12 stocks? I did my watch list today in five minutes, right? You, you can see, you can see where potential pivots are, right? Look at Tesla, right? Look at, the, look at the channel on Tesla. Look at Zoom, right? Look at Zoom. Zoom is, look at this. Zoom is, looks like it wants to challenge the, the, the March 8 lows, right? Look at Zoom. Look at Roku. That was a nice pivot today, right? Look at look at Roku broke down already broke down uh, the March lows. Look, you know, look how much room it has to go. I mean, look, there's a ton of stock. You, you could literally find 500 stocks that look exactly the same today, right? Nvidia. Look at uh, TDOC, right? Look at TDOC. This thing is look 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 how close this thing is for tomorrow. If this thing confirms you have the lows coming up. So there's a lot of value tomorrow to the, you know to to the downside. The, the question is. Well, is this market going to confirm? Is this market going to, um, you know, give you the satisfaction of putting in the research, right? And following through tomorrow. That, that is to be determined. But at least remember, at least know your levels. Don't, you know, don't be uh, waking up tomorrow in the fetal position, hoping to God the futures are up and there's gonna be a gap and go. I'm hoping for a gap up as well, right? I'm flat overnight. I'm hoping for a gap up as well, but I'm not hoping for a gap up because stocks are going higher. I'm hoping for a gap up that stocks open up higher, get rejected at supply, go green to right and start confirming today's levels. And if that's the case, cross your fingers, you know, hopefully we can have a very, very premium day. So going into tomorrow, uh, you know, the scoreboard is a scoreboard. It is what it is. You can sit there and, you know, moan and groan and complain about it. You know, your stocks are going to do whether, you know, somebody, you know, somebody's talking about them or not. So the moral of the story is, again, you're an adult, you know, get your financial, you know, get your financial portfolio in order. If you do have positions um, and you are an investor in this market, right, you know, you know, maybe hedge some, you know, hedge your portfolio. If you start seeing the queues breaking down and you have a lot of exposure to technology, hedge yourself, right? Maybe short some some cues if you're if you're long, you know, financials, you know, something is something else, maybe short some spies as a hedge, but don't just sit there like a victim and watching your account bleed. The, the money that you've worked for 
for so many years that you've seen this really good aggressive you know bull market don't let it just go away and hoping one day it's going to recover it's you know there's plenty of people uh, who did that during the dot-com era and this, that, and the other thing, they just never recovered. So, you know, you have so much information uh, in your disposal how to uh, hedge your portfolio the proper way, uh, how to short stocks looking for bottom channels the proper way, but at least do something that you, if you do wake up tomorrow morning and, you know, it's just not in your favor, at least have a course of action that you could defend your capital. That's all you're asking for uh, as a business owner of your account. Do the right thing by your money, right? If you love your money, if you work hard for your money, and I know a lot of you guys do, right? You have to do whatever it takes to protect your capital. Um, you know, you know I, I believe there's both sides of the market. You don't need to, uh, to sit there watching the market go down. The market goes up, the market goes down. It's gonna go up or go down without you. The key is if you feel comfortable and you have the proper uh, resources in front of you and you, you could really identify where the meat is uh, for tomorrow's session, then you can have a potential premium day. So if you are, uh, if you are a lover of technology tomorrow to the downside, you know, let's, let's tell the market guys, right? Let's, let's give a little prayer to the market guys and hopefully we can get a nice slight gap up tomorrow. And then we'll see what happens. If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. The most important part is have a plan, do your research, uh, and wait for that research to play out. Again, it's just, it's, it's research, right? Until it confirms, does it really make a difference, right? Again, like I've been saying for years, it's not about being right or wrong, right? If the market gaps up tomorrow 200 points and we rally up 600, Dan, you're wrong. Okay, I'm wrong. Who cares, right? I'll buy stock. What's my worst case scenario? We buy stock, right? If, if you're in the right and wrong business, this is definitely not for you. It's all about having an edge, reading the market properly, and trading with a lot of confidence on both sides of the market. So uh, let's talk about today's session uh, very, very quickly. Um, I'm, first of all, I'm very, very excited today. Um, today is opening day for uh, my son's travel basketball league. He hasn't done anything, literally anything. <laughs> since like two years ago nationals would take one though he hasn't literally done anything so i'm very very excited for him very very proud of him uh so opening day so as soon as i'm done recording this i will be uh going to this to his game unfortunately i will be only watching it through my phone because again f you covid so let's talk about it so i i had some initial uh longs uh, on the pivot side but as you see on the pivot feed as you see it progressing throughout the morning it was just short after short after short because again you know you're 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 open-minded i came in open-minded today and i said look you know if these stocks start to confirm maybe upside hey maybe they'll give us a trade but once they started failing you could see them fail very very quickly and very very aggressively it was all shorts going down the line um i caught some roku today caught some tesla today there was a lot of really good event uh good aggressive pivots so Let's talk about this. So I was watching Netflix at the open. I said, listen, if it gets above uh, 543, 544, maybe it gives a spike into the 550s. Obviously, it came no, it came nowhere near, uh, nowhere near 544. Uh, and this is the whole point of, of pivots, guys. Uh, you know, again, I don't care if I love Tesla. Everybody knows I love Tesla. I love the car. I love the stock. But I don't care which way it goes. That's the whole point. We, we don't care. Uh, we, just, we, we just care about where the value is. So there was an upside pivot of uh, 683 a downside pivot of 656 and you know tesla got hit tesla got hit very very hard uh it took out the 256 level right got hit very very hard uh closed in the in the in the 630s and now we're looking at uh the low from uh march the 19th and if this march 19 low gets confirmed then you know there's a shot it goes back to the 590 uh pretty big buyer came in for next week's uh 600 puts for Tesla, so obviously I'm watching it tomorrow. Uh, more to the downside, uh, Apple, uh, Amazon, you know, never got close to 31.85. Uh, Apple never got close to 24.30. And then here's where we started talking about just nonstop pivots to the downside. Uh, CDXC last night filed some sort of form and Medman, who the hell knows, some sort of uh, offering. Uh, there was no reaction last night. If it builds under 10, it can get hit. Uh, great job. I know some of you guys are still holding it. Uh, CDXC, here is the $10, right? Here is the $10, had two days in a row, held 10. It took out 10 and just absolutely crashed uh, into the rising support uh, under $9 a share. Great job there for all you guys who caught that. Uh, PDD, and I was joking around, right? I was joking around, I go, look, 133.50, 133. If it builds, maybe finally this thing gives you more than a dollar move. Yeah, PDD got hit really hard. Remember that? Remember that uh, Feb 120 put buyer I was talking about a couple of days ago. 
All right, so here is here is a PDD and it traded almost to 120. It took out the 133, went all the way down to that 122 area. Again, just a lot of carnage uh, over and over and over again. Uh, JD uh, building heavy, heavy bear flag on the daily, 82, 20, 82. If it builds below, it can flush. Uh, here was JD, right? Here was JD. So it took out this whole formation right here, uh, traded all the way down to 78, 70s. A big move there. Crowd got smashed, uh, absolutely smashed. Uh, same setup as JD. Uh, 89, 50, 89, if it builds below, can flush. Here was crowd, right? Here was crowd, same formation basically as JD. It took out this whole channel, uh, went all the way down to 180. You know, it still looks lower for tomorrow. Uh, I caught this Roku, uh, 341, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, not only did Roku, Roku was trading very, very thin, so it wasn't as much as I wanted, but it, it took out this whole 41 area. It took out the 334 area last week's low. And then it took out this whole formation that started all the way back in March. This thing does look uh, lower if it confirms tomorrow's prices. Just a huge move there uh, as well. Uh, Roku again, IWM. Again, this is the macro trade. IWM 216 if it builds below can flush. Here was the IWM. So you kind of get the point. Like everything started confirming one by one by one. So it took out the 216, traded all the way down to the 212s. It looks like it could get to like 209 for tomorrow if it confirms down. Uh, and again, I've always said, just keep on taking on the way down, guys. Take, take on the way down, take on the way up. Your, your job is just to keep on compounding. That's the name of the game. So take on the way down, uh, blah, 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 blah. Keep taking, keep taking. Nice move there. Uh, TDOC, I still like it. I still like this thing, TDOC, for tomorrow. Um, look how many times it held, right? It held, it closed right on support. If this TDOC confirms tomorrow, folks, I think there's a shot it gets all the way down to 74. So that one triggered right at the close. Uh, CDXC lows on deck, nothing here. Uh, yeah, good, good downside value, no reason. To, and I kept on reiterating, there's no reason, and I, and I say this again, there's absolutely no reason to be buy biased until the queues reclaim 321. That's the magic number. So until then, you'll get some dead cat bounces and random days. But again, until we reclaim 321 on the queues, very, very tough to be buy biased. And that's it. So going into tomorrow's session, guys, uh, obviously I am sell biased. Is it possible we get a dead cat bounce? Of course, anything is possible. Uh, but most important, just remember, when you get a dead cat bounce, you don't have you don't have the luxury of a safety net, right? When you're trading levels, you know exactly where stocks are supposed to stop versus supply and demand. When you're trading on a bounce, maybe it goes, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it goes fifty cents, maybe it goes five dollars. So that's always the unknown. Guys, God bless. Stay safe. Love you all, and I'll see you all tomorrow.